Hello students, welcome to the channel once again. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you, you, all, you all are enjoying your life indoors. And I want to say that each one of you is really brave and you all have proved it that you can deal with change. Yes students, I would like to congratulate each one of you that you are so patient and you're not troubling your parents at home. You're being kind to them and you're understanding the situation in a mature way. Okay. And uh, students, I would also like to tell you that, uh, you know, how the weather is outside. It's, uh, you know, the cyclone has come. And uh, I mean, the cyclone is, the weather is not good, I must say. So I, sh I would recommend you to uh, stay indoors have a warm water, have some tea, coffee and enjoy indoors. I think you'll have proved it that, you know, change, change can't beat you, right? You, you are uh, bound to change with the world is changing. We are changing. Everything is changing and you'll have proved it that uh, you can survive. Yes, you can survive in the sense we all are surviving, but you'll have proved the maturity. And I'm really prou proud of you people. And I never thought that, you know, you'll cope up with this situation. But yes, uh, we have coped up. Students, so before starting this poem or jumping on to explaining the whole poem, I know it, the name of the poem over here you can see is Ozymandias. It's very confusing. You're not able to understand what is this, okay? Looks like something out of the world, very alienating to y'all, okay? So I would like to tell you that there's nothing to worry. It's nothing very difficult that you won't understand. It's very simple. I want you only to watch this video till the end because if you don't watch it till the end, might be you miss out something and you're not able to understand. So I want you to watch the video till the end. If you have any doubts, email me. If you have any queries, you can comment me, okay, so that I understand, right? Okay. Okay, so students, uh, when I say the uh, country's name, Egypt, what comes to your mind? I want you to think for a few seconds, like 30 seconds. Yes. So I think uh, statues of gods, Sphinx, uh, King Tut statue, Nefertiti, you know, all these uh, great pharaohs. Pharaohs is basically the Egyptian king is called as a pharaoh. So when I take this country's name Egypt, all these things come to your mind. Yes. And I know you all must have guessed it because yes, you all love to explore the world and obviously you all must have studied about Egypt or read about Egypt. So when before starting this, I want you to uh, understand about this great king, a pharaoh. I told you a pharaoh is a Egyptian king, is an Egyptian king, right? So there was a pharaoh, okay, long, long ago and his name was Ramesses, okay, Ramesses the second. He was an Egyptian pharaoh and what happened is his remains were found, uh, okay, his remains were acquired by the British museums or the fragments, fragments means little parts of his statue's remains were acquired by the British Museum of Ramesses II. There was a huge statue, you know, it was very, very big, very big statue and the statue was thousands and thousands of years old and obviously if anything is thousand years old, you know, it will break, right? So, uh, some parts were acquired by the British Museum. And it didn't have the upper body. It only had the trunk, uh, trunkless. I mean, it was trunkless. It only had legs and a broken uh, statue's broken face. 
so that was acquired by the british museum okay and whose uh, statue it was it was the statue of the pharaoh ramesses the second okay and uh, it was removed in 1816 so that time british museum uh, was about you know they excavated all these statues the parts of the statues from egypt and they were trying to bring it to their own country okay they were trying to bring it to britain so you must have understood by now that where this poem will be yes you are you guessed it right the poem will be around the whole statue of ramesses so before we understand the statue and all these things i want you to first understand who has written this poem who is the person behind this creativity okay so the person behind this creativity is percy bish shelley okay so percy bish shelley okay i'm again repeating the name it's percy bish shelley i've uh, i have heard two three uh, people saying it as percy bishay bishay or bk it's not like that it's bish okay it's simple like bish like dish bish so it's percy bish shelley or in short he is also called as pb shelley okay in short so he was a great poet he was born on 4th of august 1794 long ago and he died on 8th july 1822 and he was one of the major romantic poets so now who is a romantic poet in the earlier videos if you watch of mine i have explained what is romanticism so what is romantic era so romantic era is the time when the artists literary musical intellectual world of europe during the end of the 18th century was changing so it is said that romantic romantic romanticism romanticism was started around 1770 and it ended in the late 18th century that it ended around 1800 okay so actually what is this it's nothing very difficult a romantic era or romanticism is nothing very you know it's not a rocket science that you'll not understand it's very simple it's like it is uh, it is a time when uh, all these uh, creative people put more emphasis what is the meaning of emphasis emphasis means they give more importance to emotion and individualism so in emotion means anything that you feel extreme level of emotion it might be love for nature it might be anger it might be surprise all these emotions okay and individualism means free expression like you're free to write anything okay so what happens now like if i love uh, like i like to write on nature all the other people will also start copying me and they'll start writing on nature as just it's just an example okay i'm just giving you an example but what is the meaning of individualism individualism means if i write on nature but the other person he or she is creating his own creativity using his or her own brains to write so that is individualism that is uniqueness okay as well as glorification so romantic era was an era where they used to beautify all the things of the past they used to write more on nature okay they were nature lo nature lovers and who started romantic era the people who started romantic era were william wordsworth and samuel taylor coleridge the uh, so william wordsworth's friend was samuel taylor coleridge and both together had published lyrical ballads this was a publication wherein they had a lot of poems in which they were describing nature and all these things so this was a time when this was a time and it really lasted for a long long period when romanticism or romantic era took place okay and they uh, they put emphasis or they laid emphasis gave importance to more classical things and it was of a big impact means it uh, brought about romantic era brought about a change in 
education in social sciences and natural sciences okay so this is the thing this is the romantic era or this is romanticism so now you know that percy bysshe shelley is a poet uh, is a poet that is belonging to the romantic era or he is regarded as a romantic poet and he is regarded as one of the finest lyric and philosophical poets in the english poetry uh so the unfortunate thing is that the shelley a uh, percy bysshe shelley did not receive any recognition while he was alive but when he died after that he got really famous his his uh, most loved and the most uh, uh most what we say famous poem is this that we are going to study today ozymandias why it is so famous because uh, when he wrote he died really young students he died only at the age of 29 and he wrote this poem while he was 25 years of age so you imagine a person who is 25 years of age not having any experience of life but he had such vast experience of life that he wrote the reality of everything he did not beautify anything that is the reason he didn't give uh, you know he didn't have any uh, fame he didn't have any fame while he was living because the people at that time you see 200 years ago they were all into beautifying things they were all into uh, making the poem look very beautiful somebody stopped talking about winter some poet is talking about spring some poet is talking about the beauty of the bird and the beauty of the voice of the nightingale you know everyone was busy in their very sweet and loving sort of thing but percy bysshe shelley was that kind of a poet who never liked to sugar coat and he put the reality the harsh reality on the piece of paper that is why he took time in getting recognized and unfortunately he did not uh, he did not you know get that fame while he was alive he got the fame after his death and people started reading and people started appreciating that at such a young age how can a person have such deep meaning i have such deep intellectual uh, capability okay and uh, yes and he uh, died at the age of 29 and the reason of his death was drowning so there was a storm in i think in italy or france i'm not sure i'll just tell you okay uh, he there was a storm raging and he unfortunately drowned he died of drowning okay so this was very unfortunate even but we really uh, remember him as a great poet right so students i explained you about this pharaoh ramesses the second the egyptian king okay now what is so special about this king and why percy bysshe shelley had to write about it uh, so let me explain you in this way like uh, the british museum as i told you earlier also that british museum had acquired a large fragment of the statue of ramesses the second and they had announced this and percy bysshe shelley was one of the great not that time but he was kind of known and he had known friends known poet friends who were famous okay so he thought that why not to write a poem on this thing that british britain is going to you know acquire bring that big huge statue the remains of that statue so he thought to write uh, a poem on this occasion okay so this is why he thought of writing now you see the poem how it goes about so students i uh, i'll uh, tell you earlier only that this poem is Uh, i'll be reading out this poem and i'll try to explain you one one line of it and then i'll give you a total summary okay so that you understand every line because it's uh, the what we say the uh, lines or the language used in poem is little bit non relevant for you guys so i'll try to explain one one line i'll read out first and then i'll try to explain one one line and then i'll explain you the total summary what actually the poem means okay so let us start 
I want you to look at the screen and as I'm reading, I want you all also to read aloud. Okay. I want each one of you all to read aloud and don't think that I'll not come to know that you're not reading. Obviously, I'll come to know whether you're reading or no. Okay. So, Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, To vast and trunkless legs of stone, sand in the desert, near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command. Tell that, tell that its sculptor, well those passions read, which yet survive, stamp, on these lifeless things, the hands that mocked them and the heart that fed, and on the pedestal these words appear, my name is Ozymandias, king of kings, look on my works ye mighty and despair, nothing beside remains, round the decay of colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Okay, I hope you all had read with me and I know you did not understand. I know uh, you must have understood a little bit. I know there were many new words for you all, but don't worry students. I'm there with you. I'll explain you each and everything. Okay, and by the end of this video, I am sure that 100% of you will understand this poetry. So when at the first time when you open this video, you saw this whole big new new words and you, you all were confused. But at the end, you'll find yourself sorted and really, really calm and understandable. Don't worry, just watch this video till the end. Okay, so the first line goes by. I met a traveler from an antique land. It means that the poet or the narrator is saying that he met a traveler from an antique land. What is the meaning of antique? Antique means very old, ancient. Okay. Who said? Now who said? The traveler said. Okay. I didn't say or uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley also didn't say. The traveler said or the man who met the narrator said too vast vast means very big trunkless lang trunkless legs of stone trunkless means no no not having upper body only having the leg so two vast legs made of stone sand in the desert stand in the desert it means there were two big big uh, legs made out of stone carved out of stone it didn't have the upper body but it was standing in that desert okay near them on the stand on the sand half sunk a shattered visage lies okay so near that leg there was a visage what is the meaning of visage visage means a face okay the face so this uh, the whole statue didn't have the upper body it had only the legs and the face was just lying besides the legs in the desert in the sand it was sunken in the sand and what did he observe on the face whose frown what is frown frown is a facial expression okay is a way of look like you know uh you know when you pull your both the eyebrows uh, eyebrows inwards that is frown so that frown that uh that face the sculptured face had that uh expression of frown and wrinkled lip wrinkle means when you get old and your skin becomes loose so that is wrinkled so he had that wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command so sneer means very unkind rude expression so what i'll get together the face together was a kind of a very rude face it was a kind of a face you know People who are very arrogant, people who think they are the greatest, these people have like, you know, they think that they are the greatest and they are the God. This is the level of their thinking. So they have this kind of expression. So they have this frown then they have this kind of, uh, you know, they have this expression like they are everything that rude expression so overall the whole face was carved or was sculpted in a way 
like i am telling you okay sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions red okay sculptor is a person who makes figures an object out of stone or wood so the sculptor who created the whole statue so this person is called as the sculptor okay so he is telling tell that old sculptor well those passions passion means anything that you you have to do it it is your favorite thing like you like to read you'll read it is your passion you like to uh, sing you'll sing you'll make try to make a career in singing so that is passion what you love to do so what here it's happening that uh, the narrator is trying to see that the sculptor had passion okay he had passion to carve the whole stone into this huge statue of ramesses the second the egyptian pharaoh and the ramesses the second the egyptian pharaoh is a real person okay students he is not some imaginary character he is a real pharaoh you know in the history you'll find okay in the very ancient history okay and then yet which yet survives stamped on these lifeless things the hands that mocked them and the heart that fed the hands that mocked them and the heart that fed means the sculptor the person who created ramesses statue okay king ramesses statue made it look like it was ramesses himself it was so perfect the expression everything was so perfect like it was mocking its own creator like uh, like you know i made it i made sculptor made something so perfect which is even perfect than the king ramesses himself okay so this is what is meant by mocking mocking means to tease someone but here uh the poet the sculptor is not teasing ramesses king but he made the uh, statue so perfect that it seems like the original one is like nothing the if you want to see the character if you want to see the person you see the statue and you'll understand how this person might be how how this king ramesses how arrogant he might be so that type of carving that type of talent of the sculptor is uh, there in this whole line the hands that mocked them and the heart that fed okay okay then uh, comes uh, and on the pedestal pedestal uh, is is a base on which the statue is put on okay so statue is not directly laid on the road so they built a pedestal i'll give you the picture students don't worry and then on top of that pedestal they placed the statue so that it has a base and it looks beautiful okay so on the pedestal these words appear my name is ozymandias king of kings look on my works ye mighty and despair so what this king made these sculptor right he made the sculptor right like my name is king ozymandias and i am the king of kings it means all the other people in the world are nothing are just ants but he is the king of kings means he is the greatest so he considered himself god level he considered himself god okay so this was his attitude okay <clears throat> nothing beside remains round the dk so what the poet is saying nothing remains where is the king who is he do we know now is he alive i think he is dead obviously 1000 years ago king ramesses is already dead so the poet is saying where is he i can see only the remains okay this is the meaning of this line okay remains that are also not perfect the remains that have decayed have broken have sunken in the sand okay of that colossal wreck boundless and bare of that colossal colossal means very very huge very large so colossal wreck means it was a huge huge very very huge statue and what happened it wrecked it got destroyed this is what is the meaning of this sentence the lone and the level sands 
stretch far away so what it means it means that there's nothing now the king is not there the statue is wrecked the statue is broken it's destroyed now what he can see loan over here or loan means all alone he can only see the sand he can only see the desert he can't see the king sorry he can't see he can't see the uh, statue he can't see anything that is perfect all he can see at the end is stretches of sand that means only desert so you understand students i hope you all understood the poem okay now you understand how percy bysshe shelley was a mature person and had a very intellectual way of looking at life that is why at a mere age of 20 at the mere age of 25 he wrote such a wonderful classical poem and this is the most loved poem loved poem in the whole world okay so now you can uh, students yes as i told you in the starting like he was a person he did not beautify anything he just put the truth on the paper and i explained you the poem i hope you understood that there's so much truth in this and why this truth okay so what happens is that uh, the summary or the way that poet is describing is like a declining of the rulers sorry so rulers do not stay the whole uh, time so you, we had moguls then we had many other rulers many 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 rulers okay uh, are they like are they ruling on us now no the kingdom is destroyed everything is destroyed same with this uh, pharaoh ramesses everything is destroyed he ramesses is dead his kingdom is no more so what next so he also describes the cr crumbling of the statue crumbling means how the statue got broken and the speaker also uh okay so he is describing the poem as if he is meeting a traveler from an unknown land okay so he has started the poem like he is meeting some traveler who has come from an unknown land and he is speaking all these words okay so from too vast till stretch far away so from too vast till stretch far away he has framed the poem in such a way that that narrator or that person who he meets is speaking okay so he describes two large stone of legs stone legs okay which does not have the upper body so torso is called as the upper upper body students but that legs stand upright in the sand in the desert okay and near the leg we know students that near the leg we saw the visage visage means the face and we also know that the facial expression that was created by the sculptor was so alive was so good that it mocked the real king ramesses okay like the real one actually looked the fake one but the sculpted one looked the real one this was the level of art of that sculptor this was the skill of that sculptor that the poet is describing okay so the statue seemed as if it's so realistic that it's almost mocking the king ozymandias one thing king ozymandias also appears to be very very superior superior means i am the best nobody can come near me okay in my abilities or in my power anything it can be okay i am the best that is superiority okay and he is very mighty he is great he is the king of kings other kings are just nothing in front of him there were many kings at that time but they were the, he regarded them as like oh they are just ants and cockroaches i am the king that is why on the pedestal you see the uh words the sentence written king oz my name is king or, or my name is ozymandias king of kings look on my works and see he is saying to the whole world that look at my statue it means it means that look at his kingdom he is so great he has built this big huge statue he he has built his kingdom he is ruling on them so he is actually 
calling out he is doing advertisement of himself and telling the whole world that i am the best look at me you all are just nothing okay <clears throat> at the end what happens students at the end the statue gets destroyed and not only the statue the kingdom also gets destroyed so with this we learn that nothing is permanent okay if you are great one day you are going to decline if you have power one day you'll not have power because you'll grow old okay because one day we'll die so there were so many great people but yes we remember them by their work but they are not with us so actually they all have declined they are in our hearts but uh, these are the people who were humble but this person uh, king ramesses was not a humble person he was very proud of himself he was a very self centered king he was uh, he mocked other kings he looked down upon everybody okay this is the reason he is called as a self centered king okay self centered means a person who only thinks of himself or herself any person and is a selfish kind of a person that is called as a self centered if you see at these lines students look upon my works ye mighty and despair and then you see nothing besides me remains so you see the contradiction here in the above line he is saying look on my work so he is doing his own advertisement as i told you earlier like he is telling look everyone look see i am how great i am how how good i am how big my statue is but then nothing remains so you see the contradiction contradiction means opposite opposite of uh, two opposite things so you see the contradiction just in the next line that nothing besides me remains okay so uh, students i'll be providing you with pictures also in this so i hope i'll i have already provided and um, yes you also let me know if you like that uh, extra meaning word meaning uh, video that i attach along with this video if you like it okay if you don't like it i'll not do it but if you like it just let me know in the comment section i'll provide you with that in this video as well okay i hope you'll have watched this video till the end i hope you'll have understood the poem ozymandias i hope you are facing no doubt but if at all any doubt arises in your mind or you have any question related to it post that you email that and also do not forget to comment that so that i get to know directly in the comment section and i can reply you in the comment section uh, as soon as possible okay students so i hope everything is good with you all i hope you all are taking a good care of yourself and thank you students for listening to me we'll meet in the next video goodbye